I'm Sonny Linson, I'm Jack Dempsey, there's no one like me. I'm from their cross, there's no one that can match me. Boxing beats are right. The best boxing channel on YouTube. All the way, mate, all the way. Kulev says he will fulfill his destiny by beating Anthony Joshua to becoming world heavyweight champion on the 20th of June at White Hart Lane, Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. But he's 38 years of age. I don't think there'll be too many opportunities if he loses this fight here. He'll be at the back of the queue. So he'll be taking it very serious. Not many will give him a chance. He's a physically strong fighter with a good jab. Doesn't have great power. But then again, some say that Joshua doesn't have great punch resistance. So that could potentially level that out. I saw him get outboxed by Bogdan Dino in the early rounds pool left just um, the other year. And then he wore him down. But Bogdan Dino, you know, the part-time boxer. He lost in very similar circumstances, Bogdan Dino, to Jarrell Miller. Outboxing him early then, getting nailed and worn down. If he gets off to a slow start against AJ, there'll be all types of problems for him. Pulev is a counter puncher. He counters with that jab, tries to lead you in and counter with that jab. But AJ has to fight to his own rhythm. Pulev is rough inside, he'll throw a lot of rabbit punches. He's got a good one too. If AJ sees Pulev wants to rest, he's got to work. He's got to put Pulev under pressure. Pulev likes to disguise his jab by moving his hand around a lot before he throws it. He keeps it out and it's moving all the time. And then he'll bang that jab and it's a good jab. AJ must exercise good range control when throwing his own jab. According to Mr. Bashir, who used to be one of Klitschko's coaches, they had the ring doctored a little, so the canvas was a little spongy. So at times when you see Klitschko leaping in with that big left hook, Pulev can't get out of the way. Klitschko destroyed Pulev in five. In hindsight, it's Klitschko's last great win. And that's Pulev's only defeat. He was 20 and 0 going into that fight. He currently has a record of 28 wins, one loss, no draws. 14 by stoppage, 50% KO ratio. That was five years back and some change. This is not an easy fight, despite what people are saying. His only loss is against the Klitschko, whose coach came on my channel and admitted that the canvas was doctored. Common opponents with AJ, Matt Skelton, Pulev's fought him twice. AJ got him out of there quicker. He took out Alexander Dimitrenko when he was 32-1, knocked him out in the 11th. He knocked out the unbeaten Alexander Ustinov in the 11th it's for the EBU title, outpointed Tony Thompson just after Thompson was coming off the two victories against David Price. Thompson started well. Pulev came on strong with that jab. Didn't look too good against Derek Chisora in all truth in 2016. Derek wasn't in the shape he should have been. He kept sitting on the ropes. But it was still a close fight. Derek is nobody's mug in all truth. Pulev is pretty strong inside so AJ must prepare for that. It could get rough inside. Pulev tries to rest. As soon as AJ senses he's going backwards, he's got to hit him with some artillery. Hit him with some heavy artillery. Pulev doesn't have the head movement like that. He really doesn't. You go back, you get shelled. Pulev with his fencing type of jab, he moves the jabbing hand, the left hand around like the conductor of an orchestra a little before he throws it. That's one way to describe it, I guess. He's not going to make this look pretty. He's going to be forced to take the fight to AJ. And while AJ should concede a little ground and range to make room for his punches, he doesn't want to be pushed back at no stage of this fight here. We don't want to see that. Move backwards out of range on your own terms, but don't get pushed back. Like I said, if Pulev is stationary, looking to rest, AJ, to me, has the hand speed to do damage. He's got the reach. Left hooks will be very effective. If he's gauged the angle right, right hooks as well. Yep, right hooks. But I prefer to see the straight right doing the job of Pulev. Left uppercut as Pulev comes inside when he's forced to make the fight, as he will be. Left uppercut like Lennox Lewis used to do as he's advancing. Just want to see a complete performance, man. And, you know, hopefully 
The winner of Wilder and Fury will make their way into the ring for Undisputed later on in the year against AJ. No slip-ups here. Don't want to see no slip-ups. Vlad held a lot to stabilize Pulev's attacks. And when they reset, the stationary Pulev was rooted into the Dr. Canvas and Vlad was banging him with big left hooks. AJ is not Vlad. He'll probably try and meet Pulev with the jab as he comes in. If he has to clinch, clinch. Now this is, um, this is one I can't diagnose or break down. AJ had to lose to Andy Ruiz to work out Andy Ruiz's style. And he pulled it off in a rematch. Which then, you know, as a supporter of AJ, I've got to ask the hard questions. Is, why wasn't that done in the first place? You have to do better diagnosis on your opponent's first time around. We don't want slip-ups. Then have to rectify them. If you have the ability to beat them, strategize properly and get the job done. AJ has to be aware that his opponents have seen a man stop him and take his belts already. And they're going to believe that they can do something similar. Hopefully this takes AJ to another level. It all depends though. Does he have the same confidence to be the offensive fighter that he once was? Now he's added the back foot game and has got defense way much more in his mind now. How much does he prioritize offense in comparison to defense will determine if he gets pulled out of there. It's got to be calculated. I know the temptation to score a knockout is going to be there because people are going to say, oh, you couldn't get rid of this 38-year-old guy. What's happened to you since the Ruiz loss? But if you do that and get yourself in trouble, then you have yourself to hold accountable. He'll go if he's ready to go or when he's ready to go. It's as simple as that. To all the people saying, ah, oh, you need to do this, you need to do that. Let's remember, Pulev is signed to top rank. And Tyson Fury picked Otto Wallin and Tom Schwartz ahead of Pulev. And Pulev pulled up another situation in 2013. When Tyson refused to go through with a purse bid against Pulev for the European title. Top contenders are not queuing up to fight Kubrat Pulev. That's all I'm saying. Well, they've hammered out a deal now, so the fight is on at White Hart Lane. I don't know if Pulev got a financial incentive to come to White Hart Lane. He didn't want to go. Bob Aram didn't want it held there. But they didn't want it to go to purse bid. Aram was threatening that the fight could go to purse bid. So I don't know if they've gave Pulev a little something to smooth that over. It's not even a year since AJ lost his belts. So I understand if he's still going through a transition in his mind or in his boxing. Even though he's coming out in public and we're celebrating the, the rematch victory over Ruiz. I was satisfied with a win. I predict AJ to win. If points is points, then it's points. If it's a stoppage, great. If it sounds like I'm earing on the side of caution, well, it is what it is. I've seen AJ get beat. I've seen Wilder get knocked out. The L's and the cracks are starting to appear on a lot of the top heavyweights right now. AJ himself, just because you've secured home advantage, means nothing. It's still one man versus one man in the ring. Pulev doesn't have no great foot speed or hand speed. AJ has an edge in explosiveness, and he has to find out a way to make that work for himself without taking unnecessary shots. And in all truth, he has to display better punch resistance when he does get hit. It's as simple as that, but I'm picking AJ.